We're having a beautiful sail down south through this little fjord here. You know, it's a, it's a narrow, well, not a narrow passage, but a nice passage all the way through in between the islands. And we've had all kinds of wind, no wind. So we got the code zero out and we were making barely three knots. Now we've just had like 15 knots of wind and doing eight knots. So uh, yeah, having just a really nice passage south. So nice to uh, spend the first really good sail of our holiday just cruising through new grounds as well. We've never been through this passage before. I'll put something up on Google Maps so you can see what we're going through right now. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Some really nice summer houses out here as well. I might have had a tiny bit too much rosé last night, <laughs> but I had to celebrate the holiday. Yeah. Oh, it's the, it's the police. Ooh. And we didn't get stopped. <laughs> <laughs> As we made our plan to go south, I thought it would be a great idea to take a shortcut through the channel past Bulunda. However, I forgot about the 18 meter tall bridge at the end. So we ended up coming all the way back out again and then around the north side and then back down south. It wasn't my finest of navigational moments, but it only cost us an hour and a half and we were back on our way again. Give us wind. Alright guys, well I have to go in the wrong way completely down that little fjord there. We've got back on track now and we've just headed a little bit further east out to uh, like the Santum Channel, I'm not sure what the name is. But um, yeah, we're having a cracking sail now. It's coming up to a close reach now and we're doing about seven, seven and a half knots. And we're going to be heading south pretty quickly to meet our friends. So uh, yeah, we're a little bit late but never mind. Did you enjoy peeing? Yes, thank yes. you. For Was it good? That with everybody. <laughs> Telltales are all looking good. Well, the main ones are a bit all over the place, but we'll adjust that in a minute, maybe. But yeah, this this is what sailing is all about: making use of nature's gifts or nature's beauty. We have found that the code zero can only be used with the main if the wind isn't too far behind the beam. This is because the main will start blanketing the sail and depowering it. You can, however, run it downwind as long as you're on a wing-on-wing -wing configuration. Here I can pull out the in-mass furling mainsail, even if the wind is on the beam, as long as the wind is a gentle to a moderate breeze and no more. With the Selden in-mass furler, it actually rolls out better and easier if you're on a starboard tack. Hey guys, check it out! The Code Zero sailing. Are you excited, honey? Hmm? Ridiculously excited, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> this is the cruising Code Zero and it is huge! Really, really loving this sail right now. It's giving us about seven knots. We're just coasting. Beautiful! It's not set quite right up there. Perhaps I need a little bit more tension. I'm not sure, but um, I'll have a look at that. Okay guys, if I haven't said this before, this sail absolutely rocks. We are hooning through the archipelago now doing over seven knots, eight knots sometimes, quite easily actually, in about 13 or 14 knots of wind. This sail has given a really, really new breath of uh, life into Aurora. 
definitely it's going to help with the light winds with the self tacking jib and everything although this sail does uh, does still scare me a little bit you know if the wind gusts up and whatever you have to be fairly quick I think to get this thing in before you damage the sail or you end up on the side on the boat but uh, or you you round up but yeah I'm I'm learning I'm being very careful with it at the moment but it's uh, step by step process I guess Well, we've been sailing pretty much all day actually due to my navigational mistake. We should have been here an hour and a half earlier, but never mind. It's been a cracking sail all the same. We just got the sail in now. It was, uh, the wind changed direction entirely, actually. Um, I've just got to adjust course. Avoid that boat on my right. The wind changed direction entirely actually and now it's right on the nose so uh, that just happened in the last mile so I'm not complaining too much. We're heading into this uh, marina over there if you can see that. Whee. Looks like there's a lot of boats in there already though so we'll see if we get a spot. Hello. Yeah. Ah, no worries. <laughs> this is what happens when you snag someone else's anchor. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take it up and then loosen your one off. And then I can drop yours out again if you want. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't know it was that far out. Even though you try your best to eyeball where the other anchors are, it's actually quite common to end up in anchor tangles like this one, where the anchorage is very tight. The easiest way to fix it is to use an inflatable and drag one of the anchors up until you can get hold of one of them, paddle it out and then reset it, and then drop the other one again obviously. Can you help me get this line out? Yeah. Pull the line out and I'll just... As it was a fairly deep anchorage, it didn't work the first time, so I had to get it back up again and relay it again until I had a good hold on the anchor. Dragging up other people's anchors, not my finest moment. It's been a bit of a day like that, to be honest. Anyway, catch you later. The next day in the morning I was reminded of what it was like without a stern windlass. When that anchor's wedged in the mud you can be a really strong guy and still have a lot of problems getting it up. The best way to break it out is to back over it with the boat and use the boat's weight to do it, but still it can be a trouble.
Good morning and welcome to Morta Bunsen. This is a beautiful little anchorage uh, sheltered from the south, which, um, yeah, it's really calm in here right now. There was a bit of a party going on last night and, um, yeah, we went to see the sunset, but then my camera died, so I couldn't show you last night very much, actually. We've had some incidents this morning, you could say. Uh, we snagged, well, a friend of ours snagged another anchor on that side over there. So I had to get the paddleboard out and go and untangle um, that kind of mess but um, yeah these problems happen in tight anchorages like this and it's kind of raised a point to me like it's really super convenient having some kind of inflatable ready to go just to jump in and, and sort out these anchor problems and get them fixed because otherwise I mean you can't exactly swim and pick up an anchor and keep swimming right it's just not gonna happen so it's kind of really convenient that we leave the we leave the subboard just blown up and just on the side of the boat ready to go when we need it but yeah just enjoying the morning so far and uh, just about to go for a walk and we may head north to a place called Nemda a bit later today but we're just going to keep the sail short because we want a nice uh, chill out day because we've been sailing a lot of the last couple of days well a fair bit so let's just enjoy the day it's a good start territories we are going to find a house that apparently is supposed to look like I believe it's called the eagle nest I actually don't know where an eagle nest is it's in uh, just south of Munich in the Alps yes it's yeah. uh, Hitler's holiday home that I know up but there I just didn't know exactly where yeah but this house here is supposed to look like that what is this honey it's it's telling people to not uh, to not litter the nature. Good point. It's, it's sort of asking. So here the house is that has the nickname of the eagle's nest no one actually really knows when it was built but it's estimated as it built between 1907 and 1911 and it is privately owned and people live here so we can't go any further but there is a viewing point over here that they have kindly marked out so you can go over and have a view over this whole fiata i don't know what the word is in english but Fjord. no it's not but okay. this, the whole, the whole sea out here, which is um, supposed to be oh, amazing. Channel, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go and have a look. Yeah, so Utsikten means the view. Let's go. up there well that was a nice little walk actually we are now alone well almost alone I mean, just in this area anyway but you can see that the wind has started to come from the eastern side now and although we're fairly protected in this anchorage it's always one thing I'm very um, careful with in Swedish or Scandinavian mooring is when the wind comes from the side right and hits the broadside and especially with Aurora as she's got such a big freeboard takes the wind pretty well and uh, or well or a lot you could say and without putting a spring on the side you can imagine how much tension actually needs to be on the back anchor there to keep the boat straight um, and what sometimes worries me if that back anchor lets go or starts dragging all of a sudden the boat will swing around and end up into another boat over there and it's not happened to us yet but I can imagine 
that that could be a pretty good mess if it was to happen. And um, yeah, so we're we're going to change our anchorages today anyway. Um, if we weren't, then I'd probably move over to the other side of the anchorage over there, where it's a bit more sheltered, and also to think about the sun as well, because the sun is up here at the moment and it will swing over here so it will be behind the trees later on so usually I, we, we try and end up in a place where we can see a nice sunset as well although we found a great place last night on the other side on the beach anyway you can see over there actually that somebody's got a barbecue out and as you know it's banned at the moment but I guess the news doesn't travel everywhere right and uh, some people didn't know until a day or two later that they banned the barbecues anyway you can see here as well that sometimes you've got to try like different methods of getting the stakes in you know sometimes you might need two just to get a really good wedge into the rocks as well and um, yeah it can be a bit tricky to find the right crevices sometimes and the right tools to go in them but it's not rocket science but one thing that um, Simon actually gave us last time just to borrow actually but we've still got it on our boat Simon from CC hello if you're watching thanks um, is this little device here as you can see this is a device that basically screws up that you tie to and it expands into the rock there and it's a it's a really cool tool to use um, this morning actually though it for some reason it let go so i don't know whether someone disturbed it or i didn't just put it in correctly but now it's holding and you, and you have to think about the direction in which the boat is pulling as well and really test it there and uh, really try and snag it out and then you know whether you've got a really good clean uh, rock grasp or not. What is my English like today? I can hardly talk. And as you can see also down here as well, this is where the peak or this bowsprit, the Scandinavian style bowsprit comes into, comes into its own here. When you've got the ladder to board on the front and everything, it makes things very much easier when you're stepping down onto the rocks here. And uh, I don't know how people are dealing without it. They've really got to plan ahead if they don't have it or use a little dinghy to go around the boat and to uh, to get into the rocks here so so glad we bought that and then the Rockner anchor on the front there the 20 kilo one that we bought is just fitting in just fine I've just got to take it up a bit as it's loosened off on the windlass there I think but uh, yeah it's perfect so far well sitting there anyway we actually haven't actually tested it yet so <laughs> that's another thing right hello that is where you went It's just cooling off a bit. Yeah. So nice. It's always nice to jump in the water. And at the moment, uh, we're coming to the end of July now, and the temperature is still like 26, I guess, 24, 26 degrees. So it's it's. We had a really nice summer up here so far. Been so lucky. Let's hope it carries on. Remember the ladder. Typically we take the Code Zero out with the wind 90 or more degrees to the boat. When there is a good breeze, always make sure that you have your sheets ready to pull in fast to avoid the sails flogging as much as possible when it unfurls. It also helps to turn more downwind, but not too much as you don't want to accidentally jibe the sail. Honey, Code Zero sailing? Yes. Beautiful. Who said that a Code Zero couldn't be a downwind sail? It's... Yeah, okay, I agree. It's not perfectly sitting there, but for right now, without the mainsail um, blocking it or anything like that, it's running pretty nicely up there. And we're doing a steady five or six knots downwind with it in probably how much wind? I don't know. Seven. Seven knots of wind. So I'm pretty happy with that, you know, we're getting more and more comfortable with it, but uh, still a lot of learning to do and it still scares the shit out of me, that scared sail, but yeah. But it's 